Greetings to God's people this day as we come together during this Advent season for our daily devotion here at St. Matthew's Church in Glendale, California. Let us open with a word of prayer. Lord our God, grant that we may be ready to receive Jesus when Jesus returns in glory and to share in the banquet of heaven where Jesus lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Second Peter chapter 3 says, This is now the second letter that I have written to you, beloved, and in both of them I have aroused your sincere mind by way of reminder that you should remember the predictions of the holy prophets and the commandment of our Lord Jesus the Savior through your apostles. First of all, you must understand this, that scoffers will come in the last days with scoffing, following their own passions and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all things have continued as they were from the beginning of creation. They deliberately ignore this fact, that by the word of God, heavens existed long ago and an earth formed out of water and by means of water, through which the world that then existes, existed was deluged with water and perished. But by the same word, the heavens and earth that now exist have been stored up for fire, being kept until the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. But do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but is forbearing with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and all the works that are upon it will be burned up. And a reading from St. Matthew's Gospel, the 21st chapter. And when Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came up to Jesus as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus answered them, I also will ask you a question, and if you tell me the answer, then I also will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John. Whence was it? From heaven or from human beings? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe John? But if we say from human beings, we are afraid of the multitude, for they all hold that John was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. And Jesus said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. What do you think? A certain man had two sons, and he went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. And he answered, I will not. But afterward he repented and went. And he went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes go into the kingdom of heaven before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him, and even when you saw it, you did not afterward repent and believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. St. John Henry Newman comments, We see from the parable what is the course and character of human obedience on the whole. There are two sides of it. I have taken the darker side, the case of profession without practice, of saying, I go, sir, and of not going. But what is the brighter side? Nothing better than to say, I go not, but then repent and go. 
the more common condition of human beings is not to know their inability to serve God and readily to answer for themselves, and so they quietly pass through life as if they had nothing to fear. Their best estate, what is it? But to rise more or less in rebellion against God, to resist God's commandments and ordinances, and then poorly to make up for the mischief they have done by repenting and obeying? Alas, to be alive as a Christian is nothing better than to struggle against sin, to disobey and repent. There has been but one amongst the children of men who has said and done consistently, who said, I come to do thy will, O God, and without delay or hindrance did it. He came to show us what human nature might become if carried on to its perfection. Thus he teaches us to think highly of our nature as viewed in him, not as some do to speak evil of our nature and exalt ourselves personally, but while we acknowledge our own distance from heaven, to view our nature as renewed in him, as glorious and wonderful beyond our thoughts. Thus he teaches us to be hopeful and encourages us while conscience abases us. Angels seem little in honor and dignity compared with that e nature which the eternal word has purified by his own union with it. Henceforth we dare aspire to enter into the heaven of heavens and to live forever in God's presence, because the first fruits of our human race is already there in the person of his only begotten Son. Let us pray. O God, our Father in heaven, grant unto your beloved congregation that, remembering her own unrighteousness and corruption, she may take no offense at the lowly presence and the despised word of her only King, the just, the helper, Jesus Christ but always rejoice in his wonderful advent, and receive and accept him in pure and ready hearts, gladly rejoicing in him, and rendering all praise and glory to thee forevermore. Amen.